Good day, everyone. My name is Joaquin Y. Malalad, and I will present the things you need to know about the Madrasa Education Program, which includes its history, what it does, and how does it work inside a classroom. But before that, let us know first, what are situated learning programs? Situated learning environments place students in an authentic learning situation where they are actively immersed in an activity while using their critical thinking skills. In other words, as highlighted by the arrow in the PowerPoint presentation, learning from real life experiences. In this matter, the situated learning experience should encourage students to tap to their prior knowledge and to challenge other members of the community. And one of the examples that we will discuss today is the Madrasa Education Program, which is dominant in the southernmost part of the country, particularly in Mindanao, which allows students under the Islam demographic to preserve the identity as a community. What is a madrasa education program? <clears throat> like what I've mentioned before, the madrasa program highlights the importance of Islamic values. And let me highlight the word Arabic, Arabic language and Islamic values education, or in short, ALIVE which is a program implemented in public schools, which aims to provide additional subjects on Arabic language and Islamic values in the basic education program. <clears throat> Why Arabic? Uh, yes, Arabic because it is the language used in the Quran or the Islam holy book. <clears throat> the madrasa originated in Eastern Iran in the 10th century and to spread in major urban centers throughout the Middle East in the late 11th century. The architect of the madrasa as a state-sponsored institution of the higher education was Nizam al-Mulk, the prime minister of the Seljuk Empire in Eastern Iran before. These residential colleges were designed by the ruling elite <clears throat> both as a training ground for state bureaucrats and as a Sunni Islam response to the propaganda of the Theological Learning Center mentioned in the PowerPoint presentation as well, founded by the Fatimid dynasty, Cairo, Egypt. The method of instruction at a madrasa relied heavily on memorization of the Quran in as many traditions as possible. Once these preliminaries were accomplished, students were trained with the technicalities of the Sharia law, the Islamic law, divergent legal options, and the disputed questions that distinguish their law school from the other Sunni legal schools. Any Muslim male could join a madrasa, but the number of teachers per student were limited to usually 20. Only male students studied at madrasas before because Muslim women were not allowed to study Islamic law. Similar professional schools were also created in Egypt and Tunisia during the 19th century which is to offer instruction to those Muslim, Muslims in government because they are forced to contend with the European colonial presence during the period in the Middle East. Throughout time, especially in the 20th century, several reforms have led to various changes, including the opportunities available for Muslim women in male-dominated male -dominated professions. In the Philippines, the conception of madrasa was brought by Arab missionaries and noblemen for as early as the 10th, 13th century, where Muslim communities in Mindanao supported their local madris as an expression of love for their piety. Throughout the centuries of imagine Spanish and American colonialism, the madrasa remained a central feature of the Muslim life in Mindanao. Today, there are madaris scattered and all acknowledged and supported by the Department of Education throughout the Philippine Islands, but the overwhelming majority can be found in the central and western Mindanao. The curriculum. <clears throat> Let me start in, in this topic with the kindergarten madrasa, adapted from the Dep Ed Order Number 47, Series of 2016, which was developed for schools with five years old. Muslim with five years old Muslim children 
which aims to ensure that five-year-old Muslims' children have the standards and competencies expected for them. It is also consistent with the current kindergarten education program of the K-12 curriculum. It seeks to promote the holistic way by which young children grow and develop and aims to recognize the role of families and communities in supporting the child's development. The standards and competencies of the curriculum are aligned like what I've said before. The curriculum implemented in all public schools nationwide with the relevant competencies for Muslim learners with domains that covers the following. Language, literacy, and communication, social-emotional development, values development, physical health and motor development, creative development, mathematics, and understanding of the physical and natural environment. Next is the ALIVE program for grades 1 to 6, as mentioned in the Depth and Order number 40 series of 2011, consists of two components, namely Arabic language and Islamic values, which is in addition to the regular subjects. Schools can organize ALIVE classes for classes with 15 to 40 students only. If a school has less than 15 Muslim learners, then the school head may coordinate with the division alive coordinator for possible collaboration with the nearest school offering the alive program within the district or school's division. The component of Arabic language aims to develop the learners' functional literacy in Arabic because it will help them to read and understand the Quran. The Islamic values component, on the other hand, aims the learner to acquire the desired Islamic values that would guide them as well to the core values of the Department of Education, to be makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa, thereby making them agents in advocating and promoting brotherhood, peace, unity, and justice and equality. The history and culture of the Filipino Muslims, on the other hand, is integrated in the Madrasa Education Program in the Philippines as well. Lastly, a live program is also offered in the alternative learning system. And in here, the teachers are in charge, the teachers in charge are the ones who will adjust to the content and the competencies according to the age and experiences of the learners. How about the teachers? What are their qualifications? Proceeding to my next slide. In hiring the teachers or the assateeds, there are various requirements that are to be met. And all they have in common, let me remind you all, is that they must pass the qualifying examination in Arabic language and Islamic studies, or in short, Kialis, and undergo leap training for teachers. Kindergarten madrasa teachers or assateeds are required to know Arabic reading and must be able to integrate Islamic values into the activities of the learners and pass the kiaris and complete the leap. Also, these are requirements for the teachers of ALIVE for grades 1 to 6 or ASATIDS. For regular ALS mobile teachers, they are also required to undergo training in ALIVE or Arabic language and Islamic values education. And after that, they are allowed now to teach the LS component as well as Islamic values. However, the Arabic part or the Arabic component shall be taught by Asatids who pass the Kialis and also have undergone the LEAP training such as INSET or the in-service training for teachers the systematic selection, hiring, deployment and career pathing, and, and on continuing professional development of the madrasa education teachers or assateeds must be conducted through the school's division office. For us to be able to visualize on how a madrasa classroom looks like, here are some pictures taken from a madrasa classroom here in the Philippines. As you can see, it is very similar to a regular classroom with set of seats, a blackboard, and school supplies. But what makes a madrasa classroom unique is the presence of the Quran and a dedicated time for prayer. 
especially those schools located beside a mosque, which is very common in a madrasa. Now that we have discussed the history, curriculum, and classroom setup about the topic, let us now know how are they today. In here, I have highlighted three main topics, such as issues and improvements that have passed and are still experienced by our brothers and sisters from Muslim minorities. The, these issues are, first, the government's effort to maintain peace with Muslim groups in Mindanao through addressing issues in their setup in education, such as DepEd providing 20 million pesos from its 2008 budget as a financial assistance to private padaris to encourage Muslim education to adopt and implement the standard madrasa curriculum. This is an attempt to address the needs of the limited funding complaints for instructional materials and classroom development and or improvement. Another way that they have done is establishing the Deaf Ed ARMM or ARMM stands for Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao to address the specific needs of the Madaris, particularly in Mindanao, where it is estimated that imagine there are 600 to 1,000 Madaris, both from public and private institutions. Lastly, this issue, which I want to highlight, the issue on this existing stigma present from other sectors in, in our country, especially those from non-Muslim demographs who stigmatize the students from Madaris with labels such as <clears throat> breeding hub, breeding hub, breeding hub for terrorists, which sadly limits their chance to land to better job opportunities. This is very alarming because this is an oppressive behavior which hinders success of the government's effort to recognize and institutionalize the madrasa education program in the country. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Below are the references that I have, so feel free to search them and study them further.